<laughs> Let's go to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Uh, we continue our series on worship. Matthew chapter 15 and verses 21 through 28. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. And uh, if you would stand with me when you find that passage. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. The disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. As you said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. I'm going to be preaching today from the series entitled Getting Closer to God. I'm going to be talking about winning with worship. Please remain standing because I want to pray with you right now that as we enter into this word, dear God, I pray that this word would enter into us, give us more revelation concerning worship, for that is why we were created to worship you. We were created to make your name glorious. So God, I pray that you would just place it upon our hearts now within our spirits that in all that we do, that our hearts, minds, and spirits would be yielded toward you, the creator and the sustainer of all life, thou who is able to do anything but fail. Blot out any transgressions and block out any distractions that would keep us away from you. We come against any hindering force that would keep us from bowing our knee to you, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. We bless you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of Almighty God. <clears throat> in our text, Jesus is finding himself situated in the coasts of Tyre and Sidon, and I want to make a quick reference to that as we enter into this passage because this is the same place that on an occasion Jesus had warned his disciples never to enter into this place, to the coast of Tyre and Sidon. It was a very interesting place. It was a very strange place. It was a non-spiritual place. It was a place that Jesus had actually forbade his disciples from entering into, and here Jesus finds himself in that place. I think it's very interesting to note that that Jesus would tell them not to go, but he finds himself there. Why is that? The answer is simple. It's because Jesus can handle what we cannot handle. He can go where we cannot go. He, he knows our limitations, but he understands that he has no limitations. And the things that we tackle that may not necessarily be uh, matters that we can face are the things that he can face and handle them easily, which is why we pray, uh, because we understand that he is able to do the impossible. He is able to do the things that we don't always have the capacity to handle. When he gets into the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he is met by a Greek Syrophoenician woman. Mark's account calls her a Greek Syrophoenician, Canaanite black woman who is unsaved. And she comes to Jesus and she is inquiring of him that he would be gracious enough to heal her daughter 
who has not only become vexed, but grievously vexed with the devil. On the outside looking in, it seems like she wouldn't even come to Jesus because, after all, she's not saved. She is a member of no one's church. Her name is not on any roll or roster, and yet she finds herself coming to Jesus and, you know, game recognized game. So we understand you just here because your daughter's in trouble, not because you actually have a real relationship. So, sort of sort of like some of the people that we know that we won't mention their name, you know, they, they, they ain't studying God until life comes at them fast. Um, they, they, they want to, they want to, they want to use God. I was thinking of another word, but then I forgot we got children in the room. You know, the way that we want to, we want to treat God. We want to use him as our puppet. We want to use him like a genie in a bottle and we'll go and rub him every time we want to make a wish, but then uh, don't really find much interest in him beyond our need for him. Which is why when she comes to Jesus, he really doesn't pay her any attention. He answers her not a word. And when he does not answer her a word, the disciples got frustrated. This always tripped me out about the disciples because they say to Jesus, they say, uh, Master, Lord, send her away. Get this, because she crieth after us. I don't know if you paid attention to that while we were reading it, but they said, send her away because she crieth after us. They said two things that really messed me up. First of all, they said, send her away. Send her away. This this is this is unfortunately the church answer when it has no answer. Th this is what we do for people when we cannot help them, when we have no no spiritual means by which to assist people in their spiritual journey. So we send them away. This is the reason why many churches are one dimensional, quite frankly. They don't tell you that, but subliminally it is what it is. They're, they're one dimensional because they only want one type of people, one group of people. They only want churchy church people. That, that's all they want. They, they want Sunday go to meeting clothes wearing people. They, they want folk that have been in church all their life. They already want the saved people because they have nothing for people who are nowhere near the church. You know, so uh, God forbid if someone comes through the front door with their pants sagging or uh, they come in with a hat on their head or they come in with a joint behind their ear. They're scared and nervous. Uh, they run into the back. Y'all get them out of here because we don't have an answer for people who don't look like us. And that always trips me out because you didn't come in clean either. Most of us, most of us, if we're not careful, we'll forget where we came from and forget that God had to reach way down and pick us up. We, we forget that we had B.C. days before Christ days. And, and we forget that even since we've been with Christ, we have some days where we act like we don't know Jesus. Talk to me when you get to church, you know. It, don't, don't, act like, don't act like there aren't saved clubbers. <laughs> Don't act like there aren't any saved smokers. Don't act like there aren't any saved drunkards. You know you love the Lord. He heard your cry, but every now and then you. You love the Lord, but every now and then you like to back it on up like a U-Haul truck. You know what I'm saying? You like to drop it. You understand every now and then. You, you like to shake that laffy taffy. I know it's old by now, but you like to do your thing. You love the Lord and he heard your cry, but every now and then you, you like to get by yourself with somebody else and shut the door every now and then. You don't want nobody else to know us. Y'all got that holier than thou face on right now, but you, 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 you don't get in the comment like he sure was telling the truth today because you love God but you love other stuff too you love the Lord and he heard your cry you you a tither and a gambler come on talk to me when you get to church you still waiting to hit the lottery you waiting to strike it rich one of these days 
he goes to the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and he runs in, in, in that kind of place. They'll smile in your face and stab you in your chest. I mean, that, that's what the coast of Tyre and Sidon was all about. And they say to her, they say to Jesus, send her away. Get rid of her. That's the first thing they say. And then get this part. This is the part that really messed me up the most. They said, send her away. Why? Because she crieth after us. I don't know if you caught any of this, Brother Preachers, when you when you when you when we read this, but I don't see anywhere in that text where she called any of their names. <laughs> she crieth after us. Do you know what this is? This, do you know what this is? Really and truly, this is a case of those who surround the man of God acting like they are as important as the man of God. Th this was nothing but a case of those who worked with the man of God acting as if their job was more important than the man of God. She crieth after us. She, she, she won't leave us alone. She ain't said John. She ain't said Judas. She ain't said Peter. She ain't said Bartholomew. She ain't said Zebedee. She ain't called none of these brothers' names, but sent her away because she crieth after us. It, it was then that Jesus opens up and begins to speak to her and says, look, sweetheart, I, I don't mean to be rude. I ain't trying to be funny, but um, my assignment is to those who are of the household of Israel. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of, of the household of Israel. I know my assignment. Okay. Here's what he's basically saying to her. You are not covered under the policy. You're not covered under the policy. And I want to say to somebody who's listening to me right now, um, Stop always looking for an inheritance and you know you ain't in the family. I, I want to I say something real, real strong right long through here, and I know it's not going to be popular, but the text forces me to give this reality. Th there are some things that are reserved for members only. There are some things that are reserved for members only. And so what Jesus is saying, don't, don't, don't try to use me for my stuff. Don't, don't try to seek my hand and you're not interested in my face. You want my hand, but you don't want my heart. You want my stuff, but you don't want myself. You don't want my substance. So he says, no, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. A, a lot of folk want heaven, but they don't want to accept Jesus. That's why they be killing me at, at, at your cousin them church, some of them funerals over there. They, they be so quick to pe put people in heaven. And it's like we want to bring them in the church when they die. But they ain't want to come when they were living. <laughs> They're in a better place now. Well, that all depends where you in the family. I, I got a t-shirt years ago. I can't find it now. It said, live your life so the preacher won't have to lie at your funeral. <laughs> I don't know what happened to that t-shirt. I'm going to find it and wear it. So he says, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. After this, this is where the story gets interesting because the scripture says that she did something that I would not, Nick, have expected for her to do. It says, then she came and worshipped him. Can I tell you why this is so powerful? Can I tell you why this worship is so powerful? Imagine a woman. Imagine a sister coming to Jesus on behalf of her baby Jesus, first of all, does not speak to her. And then when he finally does speak to her, he says all the wrong stuff to her. He says everything she doesn't want to hear. In essence, I, I pray y'all can receive this, sisters. He rejected her. 
because most women ain't used to that. Men, we've been getting that all our lives. <laughs> all the brothers said amen, sister. <laughs> he says no. After he says no, she comes and worships him. Can I tell you what messed up the people at your cousin them church? They only worship when they get yes. I, I'm in the Bible. I'm, I promise you I'm in the text. Then came she to him and worshiped. Not only did Jesus reject her, but he makes a statement to her that sounds almost insensitive. He says, it is not meat or it is not right for me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. He basically speaks to her in an analogy as if she's a dog. Couldn't have been your cousin. Because I hear your cousin right now saying, hold up, first of all, who do you think you're talking to? I know you ain't calling me no dog. Don't even refer to me as no dog because you don't know me, baby. I don't care who you are or what you got. I mean, just because your name Jesus, don't think you've talked to him better in any kind of way because you don't know me, baby. I will slap you around here. And what is it about the head and the finger that make you think you're tougher than you really are? Like, it's just something about that. But then she worships him. Can I ask you a question? Is your worship predicated upon a yes? Or can you worship after you've been rejected? Is your worship only alive when you get your way? Can you still worship God when he wants it done his way? Because what she does is show to him that I honor you even above my pain. As a matter of fact, I'm not even coming to you for myself. Because I don't know how you feel about it. I don't know how you feel about it. But, but sometimes uh, uh, as a parent, if it was just you, you wouldn't care. But when it's your baby, sometimes don't stuff hit you a whole lot harder when it's your child. It's certain, thing, certain things you wouldn't put. I, I'm looking at somebody in this room. You would have quit your job a long time ago. But when you thought about the fact that you had a mouth to feed or mouths to feed and they had school fees and needed lunch money and they had trips to go on and you had to take care of them, if it was just you, you would have told them folk by a long time ago. But when you thought about your responsibility, something on the inside of you said, let me humble myself. I ain't going to let nobody talk to me no any kind of way. But when your baby involved, sometimes you will bite your lip and walk real close to the wall. You will go in the bathroom. You will wipe some tears from your eyes. You will have a little talk with Jesus and say, Lord, if you don't help me, I'm going to slap somebody today. You better hold my hand before somebody get these hands. But when it's your child involved, Man, when it's your baby involved, you can be scared of some, but when your child is in trouble, won't all your fear just leave from on the inside of you? Man, you will, you will fight a grown man if they messing with your baby. They can be six feet, eight, 300 pounds. You will fight a grown man. You will find a stick or a brick or a rock or something and knock the H-E double hockey sticks out of somebody for messing with your baby. I'm looking at some mamas in this room that if you hear somebody bullying your baby, you will go up there and fight a a sixth grader for messing with your baby. You'll be out there taking your earrings off, kicking your shoes off, got a got a vial of Vaseline ready to fight. Talking about something, come on, come on. I wish you would. I would you feeling foggy. I wish you would over a sixth grader messing with your baby. When 
Is your child involved? <laughs> Let's be honest. For any parents in this room, sometimes won't your child drive you to the altar? Any parent in here can be honest and admit that some of your strongest prayers didn't even have nothing to do with you. It had something to do with your offspring. It has something to do with your seed. It has something to do with your son. It has something to do with your daughter. If it wasn't, if it was you, you probably would have let it slide off your back. But because it's your baby, some of you have cried tears that you never thought you would cry. But when it came to your baby, you shed some silent tears. And if it got bad enough, your tears wouldn't be so silent. They would be voice for us. Your worship became intensified when it came to your baby, which is why after Jesus rejected her and said, I ain't sent to you. It ain't right for me to take my kids breads and my kids bread and give it to a dog. Then came she and worshiped him. If you're taking note, I got three quick points and then we'll be out of here headed to the Super Bowl party in just a few minutes. Here's the first thing that happened in this winning with worship. The first thing I see, she became a witness. That's the first thing I saw. She became a witness. Watch this. Because when you worship God, it is an acknowledgement of who he is. It is, it is, I, I make humble obeisance and pay homage and I'm willing to kneel and to fall at your feet because I acknowledge your sovereignty. Wait, she's a Greek, Syrophoenician, Canaanite woman. We don't worship this God. Imagine, imagine in the coast of Tyre and Sidon, if we heard that sister girl has just worshipped at the feet of Jesus, her actions speak volume to everyone else in this region because she's a Greek Syrophoenician woman. Greeks, different gods, multiple gods. And you are worshipping at the feet of Jesus? What, what if I told you, what if I told you, what if I told you that your worship is so powerful that God is going to use your worship as a prototype so that other people who didn't believe will believe? Th that's the reason some of you, you don't even understand how important you are to your family because there are people in your family that look up to you and they want to be like you and they're trying to figure out how you made it this far but then the day they see you lift your hands up to God, they say, oh, that's how you made it. Th that's what it's been the whole, I thought it was because of your education. I thought it was your social status. I thought it was because of your business acumen and they didn't even realize the reason I made it this far is because God's been keeping me. He's been looking beyond my faults. He's been seeing the need. He's been supplying the need. Some of you, that's the reason you need to work. You, your, your worship is going to help somebody else because they thought that it was because of your killer good looks and they thought it's because that you grew up on the right side of the tracks and it had nothing to do with where you were born and where you were raised. It had everything to do with the fact that the hand of God was on your life. Her worship became a witness. Her, her worship was so powerful that it sends off like a shock wave to anybody else who knew her that today, y'all, I, I did something they ain't never done before. I cried out to God. I wouldn't for the first time, Lord, help me, I wasn't worried about my own insecurity. I wasn't trying to save face. I wasn't trying to look good in front of nobody. I, I just fell down on my knees 
she came and worshiped him, which is to indicate that she came and fell before him, to fall at his feet. Can I tell you why some of y'all won't ever get your blessing? Because you don't do feet. <laughs> you, you, you don't do feet. You, you, you too good for the feet. You, 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 you just got it going on too much. But, and that's good. That's good for you if your life is of such that you can live your life without having to. But it's about eight to ten of us in this room right now. We, our back done been up against the wall too much. We just had to go for broke with ours. Who am I talking to in this room? You, you t man, just bump this, man. I just, I just, I, I'll just be seated at your feet to worship at your feet. If that's where the breakthrough is, if that's where the healing is, if that's where it's going to come for me, then I'll just fall at his feet. Because when you ain't got nothing to lose anyway, Anybody ever been there where you ain't had nothing to lose but everything to gain? You just say, Father, here am I, just as I am, without one plea. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Can't make it without you. Old folks said, can't get along without you. Can't make this highway by myself. She just worships him and just goes for it all, lays it all on the field. She becomes a witness. But then not only does she become a witness, but then secondly, something else happened that messed me up. It's in the Bible. We read it. I hope you didn't miss it. Jesus said to her, all right, it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. After Jesus said this, I thought it was over. I thought she was going to go home. But when she worshipped him, the second thing that happened, I saw her wisdom wisdom can i tell you that worship is a thing that says you're wise it is wise to worship look at somebody and tell them it's wise to worship it is it is wise to it is wise to bow it is it is wise to kneel before the king of kings and the lord of lords her wisdom comes out of her her wisdom erupts out of her. You see, you see, wise people aren't those that make straight A's. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, obedient people are wise. All right. So, so watch this. Uh, if you got more than one child and um, you, know, you got a child that makes straight A's or A's and B's, uh, that's not your smartest child. Your smartest child is not the one that makes the best grades. Can I tell you who your smartest child is? The one that obeys you. The one that does what you tell them to. That, 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 that's your smartest child right there. That, that's wisdom coming out right there. You know, uh, honor your mother and father that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord that God giveth thee. It's so easy to do well. It almost hurts. All you got to do is be good to your folks. Watch your wisdom comes out. Jesus said, I can't take the kids' bread and give it to the dogs, but watch her response. True that. She said, true that, true that, true, truth, Lord, truth, Lord. True that, true that. You right, you right. She confesses. That's what she did. When Jesus said it, she said amen to it. Can I tell you why some folk can't get blessed? Because they still arguing with God. How you going to argue with God like he don't know? Whenever he says it, you might as well say truth. Confess, that, that Greek word, confess, homo legeos. Homo means same, legeos means to say or to speak. So whenever you confess, it means to say the same thing that God is saying. And the reason that some of us can't get blessed is because God's saying one thing about us, we looking at him, well, Lord, I don't think it's that. It's not really that. Well, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't put it that way. Well, what other way would you put it except the way that God said it, as if he's wrong? That's why, I'm going to tell you, some of y'all been trying to help folk. Let me tell you the kind of folk you can't help. Just quit. Just stop today. Just give up today. These are the kind of people that you cannot help. Y'all ready for this? Somebody looking on the edge of their seat. Help me, because I've been trying to help somebody, and I don't know if I need to quit. Here it is. Anybody 
that will not accept God's word as final authority, let it go today. Let it go. Stop wasting your, Stop stressing yourself out. If, if what I tell you God said you can't receive, I ain't got nothing else to say to you. She says, truth, Lord, but watch her wisdom. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that falls from the master's table. Ooh, wasn't that smart? Wasn't that wise? Wasn't that good? You see, if you want to be wise, sometimes all you got to do is worship. Can I tell you why? You might want to write this down because this ain't on the screen for you. Worship is a correction of focus. Worship correct the way you think. All theology is psychology, which is why we have to be renewed or transformed by the renewing of our minds. Whenever you ain't in the right head space, that means it's time for you to get into worship because worship will help to regulate your mind. Anybody ever come to church and you thought about some stuff you were going to do when you left, but when you enter into a worship atmosphere, you decided, I ain't even finna do that. Because worship is a correction of focus for everybody that's got some big decisions that you need to make in your life before you sit down and talk to your friends to figure out what I should do or what I shouldn't do. You might need to fall on your knees and worship because worship will help correct your focus. Somebody thinking about marrying somebody before you go to the altar and say I do, you better go to the altar and say Lord what would thou have me to do because worship is a correction of focus and I don't know who I'm preaching to but every now and then I know I'm the preacher I know I'm the man of God but sometimes I need to get my mind right that's why I'm determined I don't care who come through these doors <laughs> ain't nobody gonna be a bigger worshiper than me who am I preaching to in this room? I, I need God to direct my mind in too many areas. I, I, I got too many decisions I have to make on a day-to-day -day basis that I need him to correct my focus. And when she worshiped, she said, hold up. It ain't right to take the kid's bread and cast it to dogs. But you may not, here's what she's saying, you may not give me the bread directly, but you will let me have it indirectly. All right, let me see if I can preach it better than that. I've been doing this long enough that I can preach better than that. She said, all right, I may be a dog, but I'm your dog. All right, all right, all right. Let me do better, let me do better, let me do better. I may be a dog, but I ain't no stray dog. I may be a dog, but I'm a lap dog. All right, yeah. So a lap dog, watch this. You may not feed me directly. You may not put it in my bowl. But what I'll do as your lap dog, is I'll just sit at your feet. And while you're eating the bread, you ain't got to take it and put it in my mouth. I ain't asking you to give me nothing. It's just the crumbs when it fall from the table. All I got to do is throw my head back and open my mouth because when praises go up, watch this, watch this. Her worship made her wise enough to understand I just need you I just need you to get this devil out of my daughter. Watch this. And you getting the devil out of my daughter is not equivalent to a whole loaf miracle. Y'all missing it. She's saying, it is so easy for you to get this demon out of my daughter that I don't refer to it as a whole loaf miracle. All that is is a crumb to you. 
You see, the reason that some of us can't get blessed is because we think it's too hard for God. But what you don't understand is that God's got enough power in the hem of his garment to heal every need in your life. God's got enough power in the lint ball from his garment to satisfy every need that you have right now. You think that God got to do it real big in order for you to come out. But don't you remember that thief on the cross who said, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, I'm asking you to do one thing for me just remember me just remember me do lord remember me i don't need you to come find me i don't need you to throw me no party it ain't got to be no huge fanfare all i need you to do is put me on your mind because me on your mind will satisfy every need that i have all i'm trying to tell you is you think you need god to do something big it's only big to you it ain't nothing but a crumb. Nothing but a crumb for God. So I saw her witness. I saw her wisdom. But then here's number three. If you're going to win with worship, third thing you'll see is his ways. His ways. Cold-blooded right here. Cold-blooded right here. Cold-blooded. All right? I hope you didn't miss this in your Bible. All right? After she says what she says about the crumbs in verse 27, look at verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy beauty. Oh no, that ain't it. Great is thy pocketbook. Great is thy degree. Great is thy wardrobe. Great is thy wig. He says, great is thy faith. What makes you great in this moment is not poker too. It's not beauty. It's your faith. Watch this. And because of your faith, you're getting ready to see my ways. Be it unto thee, watch this, even as you will. Lord, I'm about to shout by myself. He doesn't say, be it unto you according to my will, but be it unto you according to what you want. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And watch this. From that very hour, the moment it happened, her daughter was made whole at that moment. Because you worshiped, because you were willing to bow in my presence, even when I gave you rejection, and even when I made a statement that I thought would turn you away, you flipped that thing on me and caused me to realize that you my dog. I'm going to say something complimentary to you now. And that is great is your faith because you refused refusal. If you're going to win with worship, you got to learn how to deny denial. The reason some of us never get over the hump is because we keep accepting no. When you know the one saying no has the authority to say yes. I don't know how you feel about it, but there are two people you should never accept no from. Number one, never accept no from anybody who don't have the authority to tell you yes. And number two, I don't accept no easily from somebody who has the power to tell me yes which means you can bend the rules if you want to. 
You can say yes if you want to. You, you can give it to me if you want to. You have the power and the authority for my approval. When this woman came in as hard as she came in, Jesus said, great is your faith. And because your faith is so great, I'm going to give it to you according to your will. And he made her whole from that very hour. I'm closing right here. Because y'all don't know when to shout. So let me help you. Jesus heals the girl while mama is right there. Here's what Jesus is saying. I ain't supposed to do this. Because I'm not sent to you. But because you have allowed for your worship to force the issue. I'm going to bless you under the table. So some of y'all in here. You. You didn't make it this far because you were a legit candidate. You didn't even qualify for the blessings that you have right now. But the only reason you sitting in here with a smile on your face right now is because God blessed you. Don't tell nobody else I did this because they might mess around and get too jealous. So, so I'm going to just bless you under the table. Shh, keep it to yourself. Put this in your pocket. Don't let nobody else know I did this for you. Don't let nobody else know I made a way for you. Just go home, be quiet, and enjoy. But watch this. You finna see my ways because my ways is like this. I ain't got to come to your house to heal your daughter. But what I will do for you is by the time you get home, everything that you needed is going to already be taken care of. Look at your neighbor and tell them that's why you got to learn how to worship. Because worship can take place in the sanctuary and manifest in your living room. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's why you can't afford to wait until your battle is over. You got to learn how to praise him now. Learn how to praise him in advance. I wasn't even going here. But if you praise him in advance, then God will give you an advance on your next miracle, on your next blessing, on your next breakthrough. Shake your neighbor's hand. We might as well have a little church. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I'm a certified, bona fide worshiper of God. Because every time I bow my knee, the Lord rained down another blessing. Ooh, another blessing. Ooh, another blessing. In fact, every time I turn around, the Lord yeah, ooh, keeps on doing great things for me. If you're not too scared, can you hug your neighbor? Slip your arms around somebody and say, neighbor, every time I worship, I win. Every time I praise him, I prevail. Every time I bow down, I get a blessing. Every time I lift him up, he looks out for me every time I run, I get a reward. Every time I leap, he loves me. Is there anybody here? Can praise God for the blessing that's on the way. Let's get out of here. But I've learned how to give God some about to praise. 
I've learned how to give God some fin to praise. I praise him for what he fin to do. I praise him for what he about to do. Let's get out of here. But can you praise him for the house you fin to get? Can you praise him for the car you about to drive? Can you praise him for the healing you fin to have? Can you praise him for the miracle that's about to come? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait till the battle is over. Go on. Praise him now. Yeah. Yeah. He said, when you get home, you'll find your daughter seated and clothed and in a right mind. Because when you are willing to lay it all out before God and worship him with no strings attached, just for who he is and his ability and his might, Sometimes the blessings happen immediately and sometimes they happen eventually. Sometimes they happen gradually. But what that indicates to me is that you'll see it come to pass. Somebody's going to be surprised thank you Holy Spirit it's going to be a slow revelation it's going to come on you you're not going to recognize it at first but you're going to see a change it's going to it's going to hit you Thank you, Jesus. It's going to hit you that a change has come. You're going to one day just be walking and it's going to hit you. I haven't been broke in a while now. It's going to hit you one day. I haven't had a headache in six months. It's going to hit you one day. It's been pretty good on the job. It's going to hit you one day. I haven't had to fuss at my kids lately. It's going to hit you one day. My... My husband's been so much nicer to me. It's going to hit you one day that the pain that I used to have, it doesn't hurt anymore. Because when you're willing to worship, you're making an exchange. Dr. Miles Monroe, before he passed, he talked about where he's from. They, it's not like a democracy here in the states where they have, where we have president. He said we we're used to kings and queens, and how they would bow in the presence of the king, queen. 
and uh, he was asked, he said, you don't feel kind of strange bowing to some other person that doesn't make you feel any kind of way? He said, no. He says, it's an honor to bow. He says, because when you bow, when you become subject in a kingdom, what you're doing when you bow in a kingdom, you're saying, whatever is my issue is your issue. That means my bills are your bills. My concerns are your concerns. And when you bow before your king, what you're saying to him is, I'm giving my life to you because the way you living compared to the way I'm living, I don't mind you assisting me in my life. And I don't know who it is in this room or who's watching online today, but wherever you are, you need to spiritually bow before him today and say, Lord, I give it all to you. And worship will cause change to take place in your life. Somebody is worshiping in this room today that I believe that by the time you get to your address, you're going to feel better about that situation. It's going to be a transformation. Lord, we thank you right now. Somebody just ought to lift your hands and worship him. Somebody just ought to bow where you are and worship him. I don't care how you do it. We're, we're on our way out of here, but before we leave, just, just go for broke. Just, just, just go for broke. go for broke. Somebody ought to worship him with your life. You ought to accept Jesus today. If you're watching us on Facebook or on YouTube, this is your worship right now to say, I give you my heart. I give you my life for the rest of my life. Put in the comment section, I receive Jesus today. It's as simple as ABC. Acknowledge I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. That's A. B, I need to believe in my heart. C, I need to confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead. Worship him by saying, I give it all over to you. You need a church home. Humble yourself to that reality today. I want to be your last pastor. I want to be your pastor for the rest of your life. Put in the comment section, I want to join FCC. Within 24 hours, you will hear from me or someone from this ministry. But we're just worshiping him now for who he is. Enter in. enter in. That's what he wants you to do. Oh, enter in. Oh, enter in. Consume fire. Sweet perfume. Your awesome prayer. Awesome We're just basking in his glory. Feel this room. This is, this is holy ground. This is holy ground. Come on, this is holy ground. Thank you, Jesus. So we want to honor God with our giving right now. If you would like to share in the giving, if God has blessed you, giving is a part of worship. We know the ways to give. Cash app, dollar sign, the number four. Word, CC. If you need an envelope, we have some at the back table. Membership table. You can text to give, 833-380-8606 is the number 
takes forward and the amount that you would like to give. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. So come. Worship him. Worship him. Oh, worship him. Oh, worship him. Come on, bow down. Bow down and worship him. In Thank you, Jesus. Has everyone given that desire to give? Father, we thank you for gift and givers. Bless those that gave, those that had a desire to give but had it not. But where there is, first of all, a willing mind, it is accepted, not according to what a person does not have, but according to what they do have. So, Father, for those who say, Lord, if I had it to give, I would give it, give seed to that sower, so that when the opportunity is presented again, they'll be able to share. For it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. We thank you for these gifts, for the upbuilding of your kingdom, for the edification of your people. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, a couple of things before we leave. Um, this Tuesday, this Tuesday is, of course, our food uh, distribution uh, giveaway. And so uh, at 3.30 p.m., that will take place if you would like to participate in actually helping us with that. If you could get up here about 1.30, uh, we'll be doing the prep for that. And at 3.30 will be the actual distribution uh, there are people that you know who could uh, stand to be blessed by it. Uh, let them know about it so that they can come. It's going to be some good stuff. I think some ham going to be going to be giving away some ham this this coming Tuesday as well. So uh, you know, meat kind of expensive around this joint. So come on around here and get that and some produce and some vegetables and some good healthy food. Uh, so encourage other people from the community to come by. We'll be here until the last of it is is gone. Uh, so the sooner the better if you can come on get in line because we don't want to run out before uh, but we're going to try to service about uh, 300 families this coming Tuesday and then don't forget Wednesdays 6 45 p.m. our zoom bible study takes place you can also get on on the conference uh, call for a bible study and then we are praying every day Monday through Friday at 8 4 a.m. we encourage you to be on and uh, a part of that uh, as well. Thank you so much for your continuous sowing and giving. Uh, we believe in God by September that we'll be uh, done with finishing off this building. We're probably about 30,000 away from it now. And so uh, slowly but surely we're 
pulling away from that. So if at any time you want to give towards our building project, it doesn't just have to be on Sunday. It can be on a Wednesday. You can wake up on a Thursday morning and realize you got an extra $15. Somebody cash up to $20. Say, hey, you know what? I'll put this toward the building project. You can cash up, uh, dollar sign, the number four, future home number two. And everything that you give goes towards eliminating that um, from our from our budget. And so uh, we want to be able to say that by September. Then once that's done, we'll be on the track to finishing up everything that we need to do here. So I really believe, y'all, that by September of next year, we'll have everything completely done. But we want to have it paid off. Uh, this year in in September uh, to sort of expedite our process. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for uh, your giving. Thank you for your love. Uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for your commitment. Um, trying to navigate these waters is not easy. Uh, to be perfectly honest, it can be extremely stressful at times. Um, it costs a lot of sleepless nights and all of that kind of stuff, trying to uh, manage a ministry and take care of a family and staff and budgets and two buildings and all of that kind of stuff so it's it's not an easy thing to do but thank you for your prayers thank you for your support thank you for your love down through the years uh, and every now and then I just have to say that to you I'll never take your presence for granted never take your giving for granted never take your love and your support and the words of encouragement for granted you just don't know how much that means to me so Thank y'all. Uh, every dream is going to be realized, and God is going to give us something that he and we will all be proud of. And uh, let's prepare for the next phase uh, as our ministry uh, becomes more pervasive and begins to grow. Uh, we're going to be in a really, really privileged position to help a lot of people uh, and to win a lot of souls for Jesus Christ. So thank y'all so much from the very bottom of my heart. All right, let's stand. Let's go watch Jalen do what he going to do today. <laughs> now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy, the king immortal, invincible, the only wise God, our Savior, to whom be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And all God's children said, amen. Love y'all. Take care.